All right, what's going on guys? So today has been an amazing day for From Software fans. We finally, finally got our first look at Elden Ring in almost two years. And wow, was it amazing. First off, I wanna say thank you to everybody that stopped by the stream today. It was an absolute blast and we had a ton of new people in there. I know we had a hiccup at the end, but overall it was a great stream. So now I wanna go through this trailer and break it down as much as I can. There's a lot of gameplay to unpack here, and I'm going to do my best to get as much info on this as I can for you guys. So if you don't mind, please hit that subscribe button, and let's get into it. So to start off, I'm going to give some background lore that can be found on Bandai Namco's website, and then we're going to watch it through one time uninterrupted. The new overview of the game reads as follows. Rise, tarnished, and be guided by grace to brandish the power of the Elden Ring and become an Elden Lord in the Lands Between. In the Lands Between, ruled by Queen Marika the Eternal, the Elden Ring, the source of the the end tree has been shattered. Marika's offspring, demigods all, claim the shards of the Elden Ring known as the Great Runes, and the mad taint of their newfound strength triggered a war, the Shattering, a war that meant abandonment by the greater will. And now the guidance of grace will be brought to the tarnished who were spurned by the grace of gold and exiled from the lands between. Ye undead who yet live, your grace long lost. Follow the path to the lands between beyond the foggy sea to stand before the Elden Ring and become an Elden Lord. So, with this newfound context, take a look at the trailer. The tarnished will soon return, guided by grace once lost. The Golden Order is broken to its core. of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. Someone must extinguish thy flame. They will fight. And they will die. In an unending curse. Okay, there's quite a bit to unpack in that. The trailer opens up by introducing us to our new maiden and our new mount, and she begins by telling us that the Golden Order has been destroyed. And from the overview, we learn that our character is known as the Tarnished, and it's our goal to seek out the Elden Ring and become an Elden Lord in the lands between. We also learn that this giant tree that we keep seeing over and over again is known as the End Tree, and the Elden Ring is the source of its power. So it can be deduced that the area we're playing in is known as the Lands Between, a change from the Investors trailer which referred to it as the Rift Lands. Now you'll notice right off the bat that the inhabitants of this place don't seem to be normal. They seem to be undead, they're walking with a slouched posture, their skins rotted, and they look decrepit. You'll also notice that the areas closest to the tree 
tree seem to be all broken apart and malformed. And we know that the Elden Ring is the source of its power and the Elden Ring has been shattered. So it suggests to me that the purpose of the tree is to hold matter together. And without the Elden Ring formed, matter is no longer formed in its proper way. Which would explain why we see all these eldritch abominations and matter that should not be alive moving in a living fashion. The next thing I want to dive into is this character right here. I believe he's going to be our main nemesis in the game. But you might remember him in a different way. This guy seems to be the same character we saw in the original trailer for Elden Ring with the many arms. However, back then he looks much more frail and skinny. Bandai Namco also released this picture of concept art that I believe to be the same person. However, I can't confirm that since the ring doesn't look too gold on his head and he only has two arms. But if it is, this suggests to me that he too was once tarnished, and for whatever reason he went on a quest collecting arms and decides to stop us in the end from becoming an Elden Lord. Playing as a lord? I command thee now. I can't quite make out what that last word he said was, but either way his intention is to stop us, because he says we're playing as a lord. Another theory that I have is, in the overview it says the offspring of Queen Marika claimed shards of the Elden Ring as their own and called them the Great Runes. Now it doesn't say that our quest is to reform the Elden Ring, but potentially we would have to fight all of Queen Mara's offspring to reclaim the shards or the Great Runes in order to reform the Elden Ring and bring the life back to the End Tree. Now we don't know the effects of the great runes, but we see many of these multi-armed creatures throughout the trailer that our character is fighting. And perhaps these could be the offspring of Queen Marika, all of the multi-armed creatures that we see. Since they all seem to look pretty similar and could be considered bosses. Now I don't have anything to back that up, but it's just a hunch I kept coming back to. So let's take a look at Queen Marika herself. I believe this is her in this picture as she's sitting beneath a portrait of a king with a guard next to her. You'll notice that the king also has flowing white hair, which can be seen on all of the multi-armed creatures throughout the trailer. Now, the room in which she sits does not seem like a queen's throne room. It looks to be just an average room for a common dweller. The chair that she sits in is also a common chair that would be anywhere else. So this may not be the queen, but she is beneath a portrait of the king and with a very powerful looking guard. Now, we see a lot of other really cool bosses and enemies throughout the trailer, but I don't want to get quite too deep into those yet, I'll save that for another video, along with some of the core gameplay mechanics that I want to cover. But take a look at this wolf creature right here. This is probably the most direct Guts reference I've seen in Dark Souls yet. But speaking of Berserk references, why don't we take a look at the end tree. This tree is also very reminiscent of the one in Berserk, a tree made of light that when cut released the boundary between reality and the astral world. It ushered in eldritch creatures to the real world and distorted matter. So I believe the effect of the end tree in Elden Ring is going to be very similar. But that's all I want to cover in today's video. This is going to be only part one of the trailer breakdown. So guys, be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss part two, which will be dropping tomorrow. We're going to be covering more of the gameplay mechanics in that one. And leave a like if you're as excited for Elden Ring as I am. Man, I just can't believe we finally got to see it, dude. It's been so long. Way too long. But anyways, guys, that's going to pretty much do it for the video. I'll catch you tomorrow for part two.